Welcome to part 4 of our C++ for VEX IQ series. Today I will teach you how to write functions to improve your code. Let's get that excellence award. Roll the thing. Functions in C++ let you reuse your code in a reliable way. For example, you might have a sequence of actions that your robot does to pick up a block or make a U-turn, and a function lets you repeat your code reliably without having to constantly rewrite the whole sequence, which might introduce more errors. Functions can also shorten your code, make it more organized and easier to read. And as per last video, we are going to use the VexIQ Clawbot, but you can use Basebot or Speedbot if you so choose. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a function by dragging a function into our code. So let's go into our VEX IQ code here. Um, over here on the left hand side down the bottom you have functions. You drag in this void my functions in between your namespace and your main function uh, in the int down the bottom here. So here you drag void my function and now we start off with the function return type. This is usually void, but when you get to more advanced functions, you can return a value like a number or a string. And this is followed by the function name. Now, the function name can be anything you want as long as you don't conflict with another C++ function. And in C++ convention, the function name is written in camel casing. So you start off with a lowercase letter and then an uppercase letter for the start of each word. This is followed by some round brackets. Now inside the round brackets are your function parameters or arguments. Now these are optional temporary variables that can be accessed in the function body. And you can leave this area blank if you don't have any parameters, but I'll show you how to use these effectively for our function example today. Finally, inside these curly braces, we have the function body, which contains the actual sequence that you want to run when the function is being invoked. Now, I spent a lot of time writing tutorials, testing out the code, and editing these videos together. So if you find any of it helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. You can also join our YouTube membership for hundreds of in-depth coding tutorials and weekly advanced lessons. Want to learn how to build a physics simulation in Scratch or an adventure game in Python, just hit the join button below to get started. Now that we know how a function looks like, let's put the func in functions. I want to make the robot do a dance when I call a dance function. And let's see how that works. So here we go back into our VEX code. Uh, I'm going to call my function uh, do dance. And then here, I'm going to make it so that my robot does a little dance sequence. So we can make it do anything you want. You can make it shift itself left and right or move forward and backwards. So here, I'm going to uh, do a mixture of turning to the left and right. So here, I go turn four, right 30 degrees, and then turn four, left. 30 degrees. Okay, so this is going to be a very simple dance where we just turn to the left and right. Uh, and I might do it just uh, a couple times. Left and right, 30 degrees at a time. Now, if I run this code at the moment, nothing's going to happen because I've just defined my function uh, over here. I just haven't called it though. So inside my main function over here, this is where I actually call the function. So I'll just call do dance and then end with the brackets and a semicolon. I'll connect up my robot. Make sure the brain is connected like this. And then when I press download, it's going to download the code. And let's see what it does when I run the code. So I have my cable 
stuck under there. Let's do it one more time. Okay, doing a little wiggle, uh, which is uh, my little dance. But uh, I want to make this dance longer. And if you remember last lesson, we used a loop to do it. Now, there's a couple of ways I can make this dance longer. I can do it the newbie way or I can do it the pro way. So the newbie way is to uh, go over here and do a bunch of repetitions. I can copy this and then I'm going to paste, 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 right? Uh, but uh, we learned last lesson that uh, pasting like that introduces all sorts of complications and errors later on down the track. So we're going to use a loop. Now I can do the loop here, so I can go um, a for, do a for loop over here, and then I can do do dance, right? So here I'm going to repeat the dance nine times, but that's also a problem. What if I want to do the dance later on, uh, uh, further down my code, and then do it like five times or six times? Then I'm going to have to rewrite this for loop over and over again. And remember, a good developer is a lazy developer. So instead of doing a for loop here, we're going to do a for loop inside do dance, and then we're going to use a parameter or an argument to change the number of times we're going to repeat it. So this is what I'll do instead. I'm going to create a for loop here inside do dance and then put my sequence inside my loop. Now, instead of um, doing a, uh, a blank parameter, have, having a blank parameter here, we're going to have the number of repetitions, okay? So we go repeats. And then we're going to say for i equals zero, i is less than 10. We're going to make it i is less than the number of times we have asked it to repeat. And then we repeat it um, uh, for the number of times we put inside the parameter. So now I can say to dance uh, three times, and then it's going to repeat the dance three times. But then if I wanted to dance 10 times, then I just put the number 10 down here. And that makes it so that the code is much neater and tidier, and it's going to have less issues down the track. Whoop, compilation error. What did I do? Uh, repeats. Ah, yes, because I actually need to say what kind of um, uh, data type this is. So I say int repeats. Download again. And then let's take this to my table and check it out. So this should repeat it 10 times. All right. So you can see how the blend of functions and loops has made it so that my code is a lot neater and tidier. But what if I wanted to change my dance? What if I wanted to move my claw up and down? What if I wanted to move my robot back and forth? Well, that's really easy to change as well because now that I have a function, I don't have to rewrite the whole sequence. I just write the sequence once inside the function body and then I can repeat it as many times as I want. My Robotics Center Creator Academy is dedicated to teaching kids about coding and robotics. And in 2023, four of our teams competed in Worlds in Dallas, Texas. If you love VEX, then make sure you reach out to us in the comments below. We love to share ideas and connect with other teams. And if you're in Australia, why not visit us in Eastwood or Chatswood to see how we can support your child or your school robotics team. Visit our website at www.creatoracademy.au. Next lesson, we will learn how to use threads to run multiple actions at the same time. It is one of my most requested tutorials, so I hope you can join me then. Take care. Bye-bye.